This is Jim Curley for College Talk, and we have one of our Gulf Coast State College students here today. And uh, Jimmy, I'm just going to let you introduce yourself first. Uh, All right. Hi, my name is James Durham. I also go by Jimmy. I'm a student here at Gulf Coast. And everyone, I want everyone to realize that Gulf Coast is an amazing college because when you go to a normal college, you see teachers, and they have so many students. But the beautiful thing here is, is that these teachers create a relationship with the students and it's not that they'll ever forget you. It can be a year you see them later or a semester and they'll stop in the hallway or they'll stop and see you, hey, how are you doing? And they turn that friendship into an amazing, powerful unit, almost a family, no matter what. Even if it's you don't, you're not taking them, you have a question, you can go by their office, you're never bothering, bothering them, they're here to help. It's an amazing thing. That's why I love Gold Coast. Well, Jimmy, I appreciate you saying that. And you can just look at me, don't even forget about the camera. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you saying that. We, you know, we, we, our goal here at this college is to really have arms open for everybody and exactly, to make yeah. sure we give support for all students. I talk a lot about hope and opportunity. Yeah. Uh, our college provides a lot of hope and opportunity really for does. students and uh, help, help fulfill your dreams. And you're an example of thousands of students that go to school here. Uh, Oh, many years we've had the, the college here, 56 years actually. Well, Jimmy, you went through a pretty traumatic thing. We've talked a little bit about it now. Yes, sir. We just want to get in detail a yes, little bit more about it. Something happened to you on September 22nd that literally has changed your life, yes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you mind sharing that? Oh, of course not. I'm not ashamed of it at all. Um, I was in San Antonio coming home from work, and I was going through a light, and a lady didn't uh, follow traffic the right way. She went onto my lane trying to get on the highway and she t-boned me and threw my body into a light pole oh. and I was bleeding out my head my eyes my nose my ears my mouth and my heart stopped and they got me on a helicopter and I was in a coma for about five weeks five weeks so you, yes, had, you had no clue what was going on no so I was taking time. a great nap do you, any memories that do you dream of that stage? Do you um, have any honestly, re recollection of that at all? I do, I do. And uh, when I went to my second hospital called Tier Tier Memorial in Herman in Houston, mm -hmm. uh, there was one day where I'm not supposed to have memory with an STBI. That's what I have: a sev severe traumatic brain injury. Um, I'm blind out of this eye. Mm -hmm. um, the left side of my brain is extremely damaged. Um, I have a different learning uh, term that I do now. I learn differently than I did before. Like for example, if if there's a word in a sentence that I've heard before, I'll have to ask the teacher, what does that word mean? They have to give me the definition so I understand. Mm -hmm. It's not that I've never heard it before, just I learn completely differently. Mm -hmm. And when you have a TBI or an STBI, it's an invisible disability that you can't tell. Like if I never told anyone, you would never know. No. But I inform the teachers, I'm not saying like, oh, hey, just so you know, I'm bragging. I'm like, no, just so you know, this is how I learn. I enjoy your class. I want to do good. And the amazing thing is, is that every class I've taken here, all the teachers, since day one, they make class enjoyable. It's not mm -hmm. like, oh, you can just read the book, or if you have any questions, just come see me. It's very talkative. They do group discussions. They do, And when they do group discussions, it's the whole class working together. That's and great. then you can split into teams if you want. But I've never seen one student not only not do good in every class I've taken here in the past year, but not enjoy it. It's like, why miss class? Yeah, there's no point. But just sort of, it's sort of how how it's presented and the caring of the faculty and everything else. Right? Yes, sir. So what you're saying? Yes, sir. Well, Jimmy, that's great. I'm glad your experience is a very positive like that. So you know, getting back to September 22nd, that day, mm -hmm. five weeks. You uh, you when when you woke up and were you aware of what was going on then? No, or uh, so when I woke up, I couldn't talk. Um, I would wake up for a couple minutes and then go back to sleep. Uh, there was a stage. Um, because I had a trachea, I had that hooked up, I have a huge scar right here, mm -hmm. um, half my skull was missing, I didn't know what was going on. They took me to my second hospital, the one in Houston, Tier, and that's basically where they taught me how to be alive again. And there was one day I was with one of my uh, teachers and he was asking, you know, you don't have memory, what do you, mm -hmm. what do you think happened in the wreck? Because my parents and family were told when I was in my coma that they were not allowed to say one word about the wreck because the doctors warned them, we don't know if he's listening, what if you're going to change the results that we're trying to help him with? And uh, the thing I brought, I said, yeah, the lady was driving, like for example, I gave them visual aid so they understood. I was going this way, the lady's right here, I thought she was doing a U-turn, so I got in the far right lane. Mm. And she went like this, well she wasn't doing a U-turn, she just went oh. and didn't have the arrow, so she just went thinking she could beat me or she wasn't paying attention, no idea. And when she hit me, I told them, I remember she drove a Honda SUV and she had a passenger. 
and they said no and even my parents said there was not a passenger and mm -hmm. I said I'm telling you I could draw a picture of the kid and obviously in my mind I'm talking how I am now but during that time I was mumbling I mean basically my answer to everything at the hospital was there you go they bake you hungry James like there you go yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just sat up and I told them that they had a passenger I don't know if it was her husband. I just saw a passenger. It was a Honda SUV, and they said, let us take about 15 minutes. We're going to go call San Antonio. That's where the wreck was, and we'll come back. They came back in about five minutes, and they said it was their 15-year-old son that was passenger. You were right all along. I was right, and then I just passed out right after because I, I was always tired. They wanted me to sleep a lot. I was rebuilding right. everything, and sleep is a beautiful thing. It really helps your brain out. You're right. You're yes, right. sir. So how long how long were you in the hospital? How long was the therapy and all that just sort of recovering yes, after, after the accident? Um, I was at Tier Hospital to November 30th, 2011, mm -hmm. and then I left there to go back to San Antonio, and on December 5th, I had my skull put back in. And then I went back to Dallas, that's where my house is, and then I went to uh, Center of Brain th Therapy, it's called CNS, Center mm -hmm. for Neural Skills. That's basically where... They do all the practices of school and stuff. It's not like they have like your normal school grades, like, oh, you're 24, you're going to do everything that your grade is doing. Mm -hmm. We're going to take you right back to college. They just mm -hmm. have activities, and they have goals for every single month. You have a month meeting, mm -hmm. and they say what you need to work on, what you've accomplished, so it's not sitting on the same subject. And I actually push them to push me harder because they want to do a bunch of games, a bunch of group activities. And I told him, I have a life to live. I don't want to play games. I want <laughs> you to push me harder so I can be done. Sure. And that really motivated a complete change. And there was a lot of other students there at the same time that would say, we want to do what he's doing. We don't want to play dice and play Uno all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's doing memorization. and you're doing. They had over oh, dominoes. You had to do multiples of five. when mm -hmm. you, you had to do math equations. Mm -hmm. But it really helped. And I was in there. And the funny thing is, is that they said my time frame was going to be a minimum of 1.5 to 2 years. Mm -hmm. There was people there for five years. There's people wow. there a little bit longer. Um, and in six months, I said, you know, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. They said, no, well, let's take a test. And they had an exit test. They had to test every month just to see your goals mm -hmm. and making sure you were learning right, what mm -hmm. you need to work on, what you've passed. That's good. And the last test, it's a test overall, just like a final. It's everything you've covered. Um, and I did not miss one. Six wow. tests, I didn't miss one question. And the lady said, I've never seen this done before. And I told her, <laughs> I'm not bragging. Don't thank me. Thank God. I'm just yeah. being me. That's and right. I got out of there um, June 22nd, 2011. And then I came here afterwards because we have a house here just to hang out and just relax i've been doing so much and it, it was about to be my one year anniversary of my wreck and i decided why not just move here i love coming here i've always come in here my whole mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and um since i could drive again that way there was no distraction like my parents didn't have to worry about me driving with traffic because i'm blind mm -hmm. out of one eye i just started driving again mm -hmm. in dallas there's all the traffic i can just go straight here to gulf coast i can relax and also there's no distraction for example when i say that um, it's not like, oh, if I'm hanging out with my friends or family, I need to stay for a test. Oh, we can just hang out, man. You can just study later. It's okay. We're over mm -hmm. for a little bit. Mm -hmm. This way, I'm more one-on-one, -on -one, and if I need extreme help, I can just go down the street to my parents' house, and they know exactly what I'm mm -hmm. doing in school. Mm -hmm. And that way, it's studying, but it's also making sure I'm doing the information correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You talk about your parents. I bet you have some great parents that have really yes, supported you, right? They, they, they do. And the amazing thing is, is that we all have great parents. We all have great family, and yeah. even those that don't talk to them as much, because you know, you go through that phase where you get older, you experience life, you go through college sure. and stuff. It's not like you're going to live at home your whole life. But right. the great thing is, is that people need to realize, and I'm sure they know, that you don't have to go through a wreck or have something bad to happen for your family to come together. They're always there. All you have to do is pick up the phone. That's why we have phones. Doesn't take too much, it right? It doesn't, yeah. Hello, how you doing? Yeah. Like, it's, it's not like your parents or family are going to be like, oh, we don't want to talk. We're too busy. They're going to stop <laughs> everything. How are you doing? Parents yeah. are always there. You, yeah. Yeah, They're an amazing like, support group. Yeah, it sounds like you have two great parents, so yes, that, that's fabulous. Thank you. So you got moved back to Panama City. Yes, sir. And, uh, and then uh, got back to this school, I yes, guess, sir. right? Yes, sir. Why? Why uh, You just had a desire to go back to college at that point? Yes, so. sir. Uh, when I was going to therapy, in the middle of it, I started going to a, a school that was right there, a community college, because, th like, again, they were just playing games. They were doing some really good stuff, but it wasn't every single time. I would go about from 8 to 4, Monday through Friday to therapy. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to a certain point, I said, well, how about I do therapy? And then I'll go mm -hmm. to class in the middle of the day, and then I'll come and do afternoon therapy. They let that happen. And then when we came here, 
another thing that convinced me, I was like, hey, this is my first fall semester back. I want to hit it 100%. And Gulf Coast is relaxing. My parents actually went here. They graduated from Florida State. So it's more motivation. It's like, hey, mm -hmm. this is a good spot for you. It's mm -hmm. been around. They're not going to do anything wrong. That's right. And ever since the first day and experiencing both teachers and the classes and just being around normal people, not being in therapy around doctors and like, mm -hmm. this is my first normal year. Oh, wow. This is so enjoyable. And then the connection I made, not only with the students, but the teachers and the disability services and just hanging out with 101. If I just wanted to say, hey, they would stop and beg, oh, hey, James, how are you? It's a yeah. great connection that you all provide here. It's unbelievable. Well, that's great. We, we hope so. And, that, you know, our goal is to have more of a family kind of atmosphere, that's exactly a supportive how it is. atmosphere. Yes, and, sir. You know, I think across the board, what I see here, and we try to hire people with caring hearts, I call caring hearts, that really care yeah. about people, and you're not just a social security number or whatever. Exactly, You're, you're yeah. a real person that we care about, and uh, we want you to be successful and move exactly. forward in your life. Yeah. You are a great support group as well. That's good to hear. Yes, sir. And yeah. Gulf Coast is better than going to a playground. I can promise you that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So, well on your way as far as college, and what are your interests as far as college? Um, before, I was doing property management because that's what I've always mm -hmm. done my whole you life. You manage departments? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. My family owns uh, two, mm -hmm. um, and my dad has always had me do that. That was why I was in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. I've always been doing property management. And after what I went through, I just really want to help others. Mm -hmm. um, and I got the chance to go back to my hospital tier this summer and be a volunteer and help people with brain injuries and that's explain good. to the families, like, I'm not just someone that's volunteer. I was a patient here a year ago. 601, that's yeah, my You can room. listen to me on this yeah, one. <laughs> yeah. I would tell them I can experience. I would show them photos of me there on my yeah. phone. I would show them my scars. But like, I'm not hiding anything from you. Mm -hmm. I've been through what you're going through exactly, and look what Tier did for me. Imagine mm -hmm. what they can do for you. Your kid's going to make it. Just You're not the wrong spot. You're at an amazing spot. They need to hear that, though, right? Yeah. They need to hear More that. More motivation, yes, sir. Yeah, they're just to motivate and they can get through it. This yeah. is not Because a... when you hear motivation, most people read it, as you mm -hmm. know, but mm -hmm. when you have a visual aid, it's like, wow, this is proof. It's not like, oh, we heard people, the story could be from years ago. Right. There's no idea on what the timeline is, but when you see someone, and then when I say, yeah, my age, yeah, I'm 25, I was here when I was 24, mm -hmm. I, just about to be my two-year anniversary, then they see that, and like, wow. And I share my wreck, I share what I had to do there, and there wasn't a day where I didn't enjoy it. Same mm -hmm. thing as Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good, good, great attitude. I love your attitude. Yes, that, sir. that attitude is absolutely contagious, Jimmy. And uh, thank you. It's it's super. I appreciate you having that kind of attitude. Well, educate ed, educate us a little bit more on STBT. Um, TBT is a form. It's not. It's a milder form. Uh, I'm the, probably not saying yes, it correctly. Sir, the, there's TBI. Your TBI, cause. I'm yes, sorry, sir. TBI. That's said. traumatic brain injury. And then right. the next, like this is TBI. The next step up will be STBI. That's Which is severe, more severe traumatic brain injury. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. And it's becoming the number one accident, not only in America, but all over the world. And you can mm -hmm. get it from anything, from football. I had a buddy who fell off a longboard and hit his head on a curb. It can be a car wreck. Mm -hmm. And there's probably about two million a year that have a TBI. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the number exactly for STBI. I just know it's in the same ballpark because mm -hmm. they're together. It all determines what kind of wreck was or what the impact was. It's not the same. Is it something that's growing? I mean, yes, sir, Because in the past, we just seemed like we didn't hear about it or, or we just didn't talk about it or, um, or a combination. I never, before I got it, I didn't even know what it was. I've heard about it, but I just couldn't, I couldn't say that much about it. Uh, yeah. It's just becoming more common. Um, right. And the fact is that it... With it becoming the number one accident, it's going to change everyone's view on everything. Not only sports, for example, like there was that deal with football with the helmets, that's impact. Mm -hmm. um, just And if we all aware people and we can make changes all over, we can just make lives easier where we don't have to worry like, oh, for example, if you ride a bike, you need to wear a helmet. Yeah, don't be silly and not do that. Or exactly. I, I think what bugs me, though, you're a motorcycle. You, yeah. you had a motorcycle. Uh, before, right? Yes, sir. Do you ride a motorcycle now? No, no sir. I'm blind oh, good, on I'm my glad. left eye. No, sir. I used to have a motorcycle, too. Uh, but, but what bugs me is that they, there's no law that requires wearing a helmet. Exactly. That I've makes never, no sense at all. I know. Me, to I've be never, honest. And, and I'm going to make some motorcycle riders mad, I know. I and like when I see people do that, 
I always, before I wanted, I always had my helmet on, but now it's like I just want to stop. And the cartons like, you need to wear a helmet. You don't want to go through what I went through. And they're like, you, you're just some fine kid. Yeah, right. Like, no. Mm. It's invisible to you, but I can show you photos. Let me tell you why you shouldn't do it, right? yeah. I can tell you why. And the problem is, like, for example, with motorcycles, with the people that don't wear helmets, the car always wins. They weigh more if it's in a wreck. Just the way it is. Exactly. That's exactly right. It's, yes, sir. It's the big car that's the problem. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I had a motorcycle and I almost got hit. I was in a rainstorm in Charleston, South Carolina, and I loved riding motorcycles when I was younger, but uh, I almost got hit by a semi-truck that Oof. close. Uh, I was lucky uh, you got mm. hit, uh, but it's a lot of times just people don't pay attention to you. On the exactly. Motorcycle. And, and it was a raining and stormy and everything else. Oh, yeah. So I said, okay, I think I'm just not going to ride a motorcycle. And so I sold it. That's the last, <laughs> that's really the last time I've had a motorcycle. I think I was probably 27 or so the last time I had a motorcycle. Yeah, I had a lot of buddies of mine that knew of my wreck. They came and saw me at the hospital. They sold their bikes. And it was unfortunate what happened, but in my mind, and it's obvious, everything happens for a reason. And I'm aware of people that, hey, yeah, if you're on a motorcycle or even if you're on a Vespa, people aren't paying attention. Either they're texting and driving, and you see a lot yeah. of those stickers, look twice and save a life, and the logo is always a motorcycle because people just don't pay attention. They don't pay attention. It's, it's been like that for a long time. Yes, sir. But, you know, I think one thing that you and I agree on, if you ride a motorcycle, please put a helmet I on. I know. And, and, use, and, and even other things, too. Uh, if you're out on a... Um, and the uh, the boards, whatever else uh, that you ride on, yeah, uh, you know, wear a helmet there too. Ride, bicycle, ride it exactly. A, I guess there's some common sense safety pro procedures, right? Exactly, because you don't know what if it's like, oh, yeah. let's weigh it out. Oh, it's not going to happen. You're not in control. Sometimes it's going to happen. You don't know. You yeah. don't know. It can happen, and your evidence that accidents do happen that yes, can sir. be pretty traumatic uh, yes, sir. on your life. But it sounds like you have turned this accident, Jimmy, into a very positive experience. You, yes, sir. You, you're, you're a believer in a positive attitude, yes, right? You know, and I went through, I, I went through that. I, you know, if somebody asked me what was one thing that helped contribute to your success, mm -hmm. whatever success I've had, obviously working hard, right. but it's also just shifting my attitude. I remember yeah. at one point just sort of shifting, and I don't know why, this really shifted my attitude. I listened to tapes, I read books, yeah. and this really shifted my attitude. Uh, Norman Vincent Peale, I don't know if you ever heard of him or not. No, sir. Norman Vincent Peale wrote a lot of books on just, you know, I would suggest, it's an old book. He wrote it back in the 50s, uh -huh. probably. The Power of Positive Thinking, at that time, was the best-selling book in the country. The yes, Power sir. of Positive Thinking. If you get a chance, read it. I will, yes, but sir. But it's right in line of what you're saying. Norman Vincent Peale said, it's so much better to be positive. It's so much better in this world to see positive people, to see, you know, the people that see things out of their eyes uh, and, and hear things that are more positive. And your, mm. your lips, you're saying things that exactly. are more positive. It's encouraging. You and I were talking before, what we hear so much as negatives, in the, in exactly. the, whether it's in the news, or the newspaper, uh, even going to the movies, or even talking to people. It just seems like there's more concentration. Eight out of ten words that are said yeah. are more almost negative, don't you think? Oh, exactly. And people react that way and they're negative and they think it's no big deal. But people need to realize that the, the way you act is who you allow to be around you. So yes. if you're negative, you're going to be surrounded with negative people. But if you're positive, then you don't have to worry about that. Right. And negativity is poison. There's no point in it. You're always, you know crying or you have a frown or you're just like, oh, hey, I had a great day, but when you're positive, you're, your frown is always turned upside down. You're always like, oh, man, guess what I did today? Let yeah. me tell you. Yeah, it, it's a lot easier to smile than, oh, you know, yeah, some people exactly. just want to say, hey, come on, smile. It's not that bad, is it? I know. Uh, it's a lot easier. It's, it's better. It feels better. When exactly. You smile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. You, well, you're, you're contagious. I, I mean, as far as that attitude, I think, is a winner. Um, you know, to me, uh, here at the college, I interview, I, we hire a lot mm -hmm. of people. Uh, the one thing, obviously, you want people that have the skills, but, it, you know, the next thing I check is attitude. How do they yes, come sir. across? Uh, if they're sort of negative and I feel that, I'd rather they not be here at the college. I'd rather exactly. have somebody like you that has that uh, positive attitude, that sees the world and, and, and the good, yeah. and, uh, you know, the, and the positive exactly. way. But, and that's uh, like what I explain to people, like, um, the whole positive and negative thing, and when they go, well, with your wreck, I'm sure you were negative. I'm like, no, man, I've never complained once since the day I woke up. I never complained about being blind to one eye, the left side of my brain not mm -hmm. working, being handicapped, um, 
learning how to walk again, I was never like, oh, I hate this. Oh, no, no. I was like, hey, always smiling. And because, mm-hmm. like you said, it's so addictive. It's natural. It's not like you have to learn about it. Oh, I need to go buy an app. No, it's free. Yeah. It's free. It's free. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. And, and to me, I believe that is the most powerful medicine, uh, positive. I, I think somebody who's negative a lot affects your health. It really does. Mental health, physical health, in a lot of ways. And a lot it of really research does. has said that, too. Uh, but it is the most powerful tool. Again, I, I attribute even my study, Norman Vincent Peale, I, I, I just read a lot about him and just sort of shifted my thinking a lot. It was sort of my attitude that I attribute more to yeah. success in my job than anything else. Uh, it's, it was just attitude. Uh, it's just so much easier. I think you get a lot further in life you by, really by having that kind I of agree. attitude. I, I think people are getting despair, depression, and everything else. It's just because they land in that negative pool, and exactly. that's where they stay a lot of times. And even, like I try to tell people, if you're constantly negative, or even if you're like, oh, I'm not that negative, but even if it's just very little, well, once you start, it's like a fire. Yeah. Once you start burning that fire, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're like, oh, I stopped complaining. Well, that's all you're used to. So the stuff yeah. around you is negative, but if you never complain, you don't need to worry. Yeah, that's exactly right. And yeah. even people that you might be around that might start being negative, but... If you just start being, hey, you know, it's not that bad, guys. Uh, exactly. Let's look at this another way. Uh, you start changing people around you a little bit. Exactly. It starts to happen, right? Yeah. And I tell people when they're like, oh, I want to do this or so-and-so did this, I try to explain to them, just because one person does it doesn't mean you need to copy them because you live your own life and no one lives your life for you. No. No, no one lives your life for you. That's exactly right. You have that one life. Yeah. And you might as well be happy and ha- and having a good attitude with yes, it. Yes, sir. Uh, and if you love the life you live, life will love you right back 100%. Absolutely right. Yes, sir. I call it God winks, too. Uh, exactly. I, uh, I think God winks, gives us God winks to move forward in life. And, yes, sir. And, and, you know, sort of like God, you, you went through a traumatic uh, incident with you know, having the wreck and everything. But yes, sir. God is using you, I think, my belief, in a certain way to make a difference in this world. And that's what I've been told. And even when um, I went through my wreck and when I died, one of the things the doctor had said at my second hospital, they were amazed how I don't have any rash. I don't have any road rash or anything. I don't have any scars from my wreck. I have scars from surgery. That's interesting. And I explained to them it's because my grandfather, my mom's dad, who passed away, his name's Opa, caught me. And it's not like when I can still remember exactly. It, it wasn't like, oh, it was a dream. It felt real. I knew exactly what they're wearing. He caught me. Right. I was like, I get my bike. I need to sit up. He's like, no, sit down. He was rubbing me. He goes, Tell your grandmother, Grammy, and your mom, and all the family, and your dad, I love them and can't wait to see you all again. I watch you. And then my other dog came up, Bull, the only dog I've ever had. Right. I, came, I was like, Bull, what are you doing? He was wagging his tail. I was petting him. <laughs> and then my other buddy, Bryson, who died in motocross when I was in high school, he came up and said, James, bikes killed me. I won't let them kill you. It's not your time yet. And then my other grandparents, uh, my dad's grandparents, they're my, my great-grandparents. Pops and Grandma. Grandma was that walking by. Pops pulled up in the, the only truck I've ever seen him in, a Chevy blue C10 truck. He pulled up and goes, you don't need to wait on to go to the hospital. I'll drive you there right now. It's not <laughs> your time to die, I promise you. Right. And then Grandma came up with her famous chocolate cake and goes, eat this. It'll bring you back. And I was like, wow. Special. It was amazing. We all have family watching us. Everything happens for a reason. Well, I think we do, too. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I've read quite a few books and studies, too. And I think a lot of people have gone through that. Uh, and yes, sir. They give that demonstration. There was a book not long ago, I think it's Heaven Can Wait or something like yes, that. Yes, sir, yeah. Uh, and, and it was like they really experienced sort of what you're talking about, and even experiencing going to heaven and experiencing all that, and, uh, and then coming back. It wasn't their time. They came yes, back. Yes, sir. And, and the crazy thing that I took from that is, and I speak the same for so many kids, at, when you're a little kid, you go to church with families for holidays. You go every Sunday. Then the older you get, you start going for special holidays. It's not you stop believing. You just have college. You have you move away, right. but you just don't go. But you still will go when you're home for vacation right. and stuff. And that's how I was. And um, after my wreck, I always thought before that heaven was just a story. It's out of a book. But mm-hmm. after what I experienced and when I went there to heaven and what I went through and saw my loved ones that I haven't seen, in multiple years, heaven is real. It's a real deal. It's not just a story. It's a good message. I, I yes, believe that too, and I, I think a lot of other people have experienced that. And it's great to not to be afraid to say that. Oh uh, yes, sir. I'm not. God has an astonishing plan for us all. That's absolutely right. Yes, sir. Where do you see yourself going, as far as career and everything else, and moving um, forward? 
I just want to, like I said, help others. I would love to yeah. not only motivate other people in school, but I also want to go work um, at that tier hospital because the greatest thing is, is just like here at Gulf Coast, all my nurses, all my doctors became best friends and they became family because I was mm -hmm. there. They helped me literally every single day. Mm -hmm. But then to go back there and work and be like, oh yeah, I work with my family. They took care of me and then I can explain that to patients while I'm working there. I used to be a patient here. This is my family. This is also going to be your family. It's an amazing mm -hmm. bond. Just like here when you have students that actually, because some students don't talk to the teacher. They're right. just, they might be nervous or yeah. and they're like, oh, he probably don't want to talk to me. They just have right. that mindset. It's right. like, no, but you become friends and that turns into family. Right. And, and they help you succeed in life. They do. And I, you know, I, we're, I think we are blessed with great teachers here yes, and sir. staff. Yes, sir. It's absolutely they really amazing. really care. Yes, sir. They're here for a real special reason. And they exactly. want to help students and, and to help you to move forward in your yes, life. Yes, sir. And, and sometimes you just have to ask, you know, hey, can I talk to you? And can you give me some advice? Exactly. And they'll give it. And the amazing thing that the teachers do and the staff here at Gulf Coast, even that the counselors, I've talked to everyone. Right. I love talking to people. Good. Um, for example, it's funny to me, but people don't think this is funny. They just are amazed. Um, I'm supposed to get my AA, and I was supposed to get it in the spring. Right. But now, um, when they changed my transcript, and they had some stuff that transferred. When I first started here, it said it worked, and then there was stuff on uh, when you log in to Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. So I, they fixed that problem. Well, now I get it at the end of this December, this yeah. semester, I'm sorry. Well, December 5th. And the funny thing, that the reason I think it's funny, well, December 5th, two years ago, is when I had my skull put back in. But on my second year anniversary, I'm getting my AA. So that's why it's funny to me. It's like, I, because before my wreck, I would honestly would never expect yeah. To get my A right. at all, like oh yeah, school, woohoo, yeah, school. Yeah. But no, after like I told you, I love school. It's like yeah, I'm getting my A. Special. It's a beautiful place y'all have here. Y'all have amazing staff, and y'all do it tremendously. An amazing thing every single day. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's that's great to hear. It's great that you, uh, Jimmy, shared your story today. I appreciate yeah, yes, you sharing sir. that. And if you don't mind, I might mention that I've talked oh, to okay. you. Oh yeah, yes sir, of course. Encourage other people not to give up, to stay positive. Yeah, uh, and that's uh, what I explain. I'm not like when I explain to them, I tell them the story. Like, look, I'm not trying to brag or win a trophy. No, I'm just saying, look, if what I've been through, imagine what you can do without leaving our world. That's you can exactly just wake right. up. Every day is a new day. You wake up and can breathe, and you get to spend time with your family and friends that turn into family, and just tell everyone you love them because you never know. Yeah. When he's going to call you to go home, you're going to have to leave. That's exactly right. It's sort yes, of a roulette wheel almost. We don't yes, know sir. when the number comes yes, up. And, uh, I, but, but I think the key is just enjoying life, enjoying exactly. each day, and uh, share, share your love. Tell people you love yes, them. Yes, sir, give, always. Give a hug. I uh, always give up. People are like, oh, let's just give a handshake. I just yeah. give hugs because yeah. if you realize, giving hugs, that your arms symbolize your heart. Just wrap it around them. That's oh, great. Warm them up. You know, more of that we need in this world. Yes, sir. All we need is love. No joke. Well, we're going to end it on that. That's a great way to end it, Jimmy. Great yes, job. Very Thank nice you, sir. Thank I you, appreciate sir. it. I hope you keep in touch with me, oh, too. of course. Let me yes, know sir. How you're doing. I would advise you, too, if you're finishing this December. For sure. We have our graduation in the spring, as you probably know. I would love you to just walk across the stage. That'd be great. That's yes, sir. That's a great symbol of celebration. And yes, sir. your parents and family being there, too. But, uh, That'd be great. Thank you, sir. hope you do that. I'm going yes, to remember sir. that. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you that if I see you, I'm going to say, okay, Jimmy, don't forget to walk across the stage. Yes, but, sir. Well, great talking to you, Jimmy. Yes, sir. Best Thank of you luck so much. To you. Thank you. This is uh, Jim Curley talking uh, to uh, Jimmy today, and Jimmy's got has shared a great story with us, and love his attitude as far as a positive attitude. Keep moving forward, and see each day as an opportunity to make a difference, to make a difference with other people. Again, this is uh, Jim Curley for College Talk.